On a hot night in June 1969, police raided the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, New York. But this time, rather than be arrested, the queens and street kids fought back. The riots that ensued are considered the beginning of the LGBTQ movement in America. But the movement has much deeper roots. Three years before Stonewall in August 1966, trans people at Compton's Cafeteria in San Francisco also rioted against the police. Late at night, when trans people congregated there, police would routinely harass them in their sanctuary. But on this night, led by trans women and femmes of color, the community resisted. Similar but lesser-known uprisings occurred in Los Angeles at Cooper's Donuts in 1959 and at the Black Cat in 1967 and in Philadelphia at Dewey's Restaurant in 1965. There are probably many other such events yet to be uncovered. They remind us of our courageous history of resisting institutionalized bullying and oppression. In the decades that followed, trans people largely remained in the shadows, quietly contributing to society. Our community was still denied employment, housing, health care, and legal protection, essentially the basic right to live. Yet even when they were criminalized by anti-cross-dressing and anti-loitering laws, our ancestors, including Miss Major, Marsha P. Johnson, and Sylvia Rivera, and Flawless Sabrina, survived. They all spent time in jail because they dared to be themselves when our society made it a crime to deviate from gender norms. But time marched forward, and so did they, passing along their survival strategies. And today, trans people are more visible than ever. Though our lives and bodies are sometimes celebrated, we remain more often targeted. In schools, harassment often forces trans students to drop out. Federal and state governments act as bullies too, now rescinding guidance to schools on how to protect trans students and passing harmful laws banning trans people from common restrooms. Epidemics of homelessness, HIV, and incarceration constrain the survival opportunities for trans women of color. The murder rate of trans women of color increases with every passing year. Rather than invest in our survival, the new administration has attempted to both literally and figuratively delete us and has ignored requests to investigate the escalating violence against us. Only 18 states explicitly and comprehensively protect trans people from discrimination. Many other state lawmakers are focused on targeting us for more discrimination. In 2017, lawmakers in 22 states introduced more than 50 bills restricting the rights of trans people. Even as these lawmakers signal that we are not worthy of protection, we persevere. Most of us have already spent years in dark places wrestling with our truths, feeling ashamed of who we are. But when we manage to survive and even to love ourselves, we are stronger than ever. Try as they might, these lawmakers cannot erase us. Our rights will be hard won, but we are winning. Our community is resilient and our history of resistance runs deep. Following in the footsteps of Flawless, Major, Sylvia, Marsha, we fight back the way they did. We take care of each other, we tell our stories, and we demand justice. Join the fight in courts, in state legislatures, in the streets, in the voting booths. Resistance is our birthright, the gift passed on from our elders. We carry the lessons of Coopers, Stonewall, Comptons, and the many strategies that continue to give us hope and life. We have always existed, and we will continue to fight until we are all safe and free.